old boring shift too much to ask? It's like a puncture one. Boys across town just caught two more bodies. Said both had some kind of mark on their neck. Got three random victims with the times of death and minutes apart. The bodies are miles apart. How's that work? Suspect heading west across Liberty. Hello, Thomas. What'd you say? Is this where it happens? Today marks the nine year anniversary of the Market Street murders and a still unidentified suspect. Detective Lockhart, yes, hello. What do you mean it's happening again? You guys gotta see this. Philly PD. We've seen this woman. Nice to see you again. She gets torn apart by a train and nine years later she's back. She is priority number one for all law enforcement agencies. You have to stop chasing me. I'm doing all this for a reason. We're all going forward, but her. She's going backwards. You have no idea what's coming. If you kill me now, the world as you know it will end. Moral evil is wrong done to others. It can exist even when unaccompanied by external action. A murder is an evil action, but it has to start with the moral evil of hatred in the heart. Matthew 5, 21 through 22. Jesus said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For it's from within, out of a person's heart, those evil thoughts come. Sexual immortality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Mark 7, 20-23 As the delusional, insane cult of liberalism continues to affect every institution across America, Hollywood has been transformed into the place where left-wing fantasies are played out on the big screen to satisfy the delusions of the brainwashed masses. The latest example of these left-wing fantasies is found in a new Netflix feature movie called In the Shadow of the Moon. This new film imagines time-traveling liberals who wear Antifa hoodies murdering patriots across America. Following a pre-crime kill list that includes a concert pianist, a grill cook, a bus driver, and other people who have done nothing wrong. The pre-crime murder is intended to execute these people before they start an uprising against globalism, which of course seeks to overrun America and destroy our national sovereignty. The entire point of the film is to make sure all these people who defend America are killed, ensuring globalism succeeds in overrunning this nation and enslaving humanity. The film's writers are clearly in the pro-enslavement camp and believe that the end justifies the means. In the Shadow of the Moon, which stars Boyd Holbrook and Cleopatra Coleman, they depict patriots that are so evil that their crimes defy time. Uh, with all the unusual smears that you would expect from a left-wing Ministry of Truth propaganda operation. After all, even the New York Times now just fabricates total fantasy to try to destroy Trump. The new film conflates patriotism with white supremacy and anti-globalism paranoia. All the typical symbols of patriots are demonized in the film, including the American flag, AR-15s, and resistance against global tyranny. The premise of the film is that an alignment of the moon and the earth causes a time-traveling wormhole that opens up once every nine years, somehow allowing one specific person to travel back in time so they can murder patriots at ever earlier opportunities. The pre-crime murder is fully justified by the characters in the film, who explain that killing patriots is necessary to stop civil war that might kill millions. 
Nowhere in the film, of course, is any character concerned about the Democrats, total destruction of the Bill of Rights, their trampling of the First Amendment and Second Amendment, or the rise of global authoritarianism, or even the fact that the entire mainstream media today has become nothing but a fiction fantasy fake news cartel that pushes lies in order to destroy America from within. In fact, this film functions as an example of rising globalist authoritarianism and how it rolls out propaganda campaigns to try to brainwash the masses into believing that loving your country is somehow evil. I suppose, in other words, the film parodies itself. See, the writers seem to have no clue that their project is itself exactly the kind of dystopian authoritarian tyranny that sci-fi films in earlier generations fought against. While today's progressives are thrilled when people from Somalia love Somalia, Elhan Omar, or when people from Mexico love Mexico, somehow when Americans love their own country, that's extremely evil and worth the label of white nationalism. Again and again throughout the last half of this film, the message becomes increasingly clear that anyone who loves America must be killed. That's the real message of the radical left which now controls Hollywood. This is literally what they believe about our world today, and it's why they demand to take away all the firearms of conservatives, Christians, and Trump supporters. Because once they disarm you, they quite literally want to murder you. But they have to convince you to disarm first, hence all the false flag operations and coordinated anti-gun media propaganda. And not surprisingly, the main character carrying out all this pre-crime murder is wearing an Antifa hoodie and has a shaved head, sporting a gender-neutral look that's all part of the transgenderism indoctrination now targeting children. I'm surprised the film didn't show all the cities flooding with ocean water to try to terrorize the audience with more climate change hysteria. But then again, filming movies on the water is horrendously difficult. Apparently, even leftists can only pack so much propaganda into one film before the whole thing becomes absurd. Separating the message from the technical achievements of the film, it's worth noting that the production value of this feature film is top notch. The cinematography, action scenes, and special effects are extremely well done. The director is clearly very skilled in his art. It's really sad to see all this incredible talent being swept into a delusional hate cult known as progressivism, which now openly fantasizes about murdering political opponents in order to achieve authoritarian utopia run by Antifa-type lunatics. But that's what Hollywood has come to today, a filth-ridden cabal of delusional lunatics, mental patients, and child diddlers, and would-be murderers who see Antifa as the savior of America, and Trump as the mortal enemy of man. When the Hollywood elite isn't molesting child actors or staging Weinstein-style casting couch rapes of young women, they're screaming about how horrible it is to live in a country that has freedom of speech and freedom to think. That's exactly why these Hollywood lunatics also have it in for Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr, because even comedy is no longer tolerated by the intolerant left. Everything the deranged left now promotes is rooted in fiction, climate change, Russia collusion hoax, the Ukraine whistleblower hoax, and even the insane idea that children are born genderless, and that there are infinite numbers of genders in human beings, but not in other mammals such as apes or dogs. In the months and years since the 2016 election outcome, it is clear that progressives have lost their collective minds and are now retreating to their own made-up delusions and bubble words to fantasize about the future they wish would come true. Their future, of course, requires the mass murder of all political opponents, which is exactly how uh, Stalin, Mayo, and other communist zealots achieve their goals, uh, because the progressive left in America today is essentially a repeat of the communists from the 1950s. Netflix is, of course, squarely in the camp of lunatic leftists who want to murder everyone who loves America. Instead of using its platform to promote universal freedom and liberty for all people, regardless of their skin color or sexual orientation, they instead demonize those who love America, openly depicting the justification for the pre-crime murder of those who might rise up and resist global tyranny. It is just one more example of sick, twisted propaganda from the deranged left which has utterly abandoned all ethics, morality, civility, fairness, and rule of law. With their top presidential candidates like Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton now collapsing into neurological decrepitude, it's, it's no wonder the world of fantasy is all the leftists have remaining. Look, in the, in the real world, no one wants to be ruled by a bunch of lunatic left-wing psychopaths who fantasize about the chemical castration of children, post-birth and fantasize, and silencing all their political opponents by suppressing the diversity of ideas. As a rule of thumb, never let people who celebrate the murder of their own babies also run your country, or they will run it into the ground. 
the way I see it is if the future tells us anything about progressives and what will come, it's that everything run by Democrats turned to ruin, which is why Democrat-run cities are already collapsing into filth, lawlessness, violence, and rampant disease. If future time travelers could really visit us in the present and take actions to make the world a better place, they'd cut the tongue out of the mouth of Rep. Adam Schiff to finally put a stop to all of his outrageous, treasonous lies. Alas, that's my own slip into fantasy, since such a thing will never happen in the real world. But I mean, if we're going to play fantasy, why not fantasize about a world where traitors are punished and the courageous patriots are celebrated? The Bible also says that children are a blessing from God, Psalm 127.3. They are in need of instruction, Proverbs 8, 32-33, and are quite able to learn. Timothy was a student of the Word at a very young age. He knew Holy Scripture from infancy, 2 Timothy 3.15, having been taught by his godly mother and grandmother. And now we have a disgusting cartoon on Netflix, which critics have slammed as animated kiddie porn. The film features two obviously demonic characters teaching prepubescent children to engage in the perverse sexual and homosexual activities of all kinds. Jay, you're so good at the before sex stuff. Yeah, for girls and guys, bro. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm kind of the ultimate. Isn't too hard? I got it at top, man. Yet it screams bottom. Top, bottom. These are old paradigms, man. You look like a hot hunk of cheese. Ah, I'm the only out kid in the whole school. There's nobody for me to give a valentine to anyway. That's why I've been pushing you to go on websites. Going online to meet someone just feels thirsty. Yeah, thirsty for some of that bussy. Bussy? What is bussy? It's butt You're into that, right? Um, I don't know. That's why you gotta get online, Matt. Oh, they talk about butt if that makes you uncomfortable, buckle up, y'all, because this is a double episode. The show, called Big Mouth, is filthier and more obscene than even the most seasoned observers of America's rapid culture and moral implosion could possibly imagine. It is simply pure evil. Observers have estimated the age of the child characters in the show to be around 11 years old. More than a few critics and analysts have suggested that the purpose for the show is to normalize pedophilia, groom children for predators to abuse, and break down the final remaining moral taboos that still exist in American society. Uh, from the clips and images available on Twitter and in news reports, it's clear that this is evil, it's plain and simple. Perhaps the most outrageous scenes highlighted so far involve the animated portrayal of young children's genitals over and over again. Uh, critics suggested it was aimed at grooming children for predators to abuse while normalizing pedophilia. Hollywood and the world elite are full of child molesters, and they want to normalize their derangement. The profanity and grotesque immorality and the perversion make the show self-evidently unsuitable for children. On the other hand, the constant portrayal of young children's genitals and similar imagery make it self-evidently unsuitable for adults. In short, it's unsuitable for anyone but the most depraved minds. The real goal simply appears to corrupt and sexualize more young children. The show has also dedicated an entire episode to glorifying tax-funded abortion giant Planned Parenthood, which massacres hundreds of thousands of pre-born children each year. Quote unquote, there's a lot of stigma around abortion, Planned Parenthood and spokeswoman Dinah Stevens. So I was grateful when I saw that the Big Mouth episode included a range of services. Two of the main characters, dubbed Hormone Monsters, guide the children through being sexualized, encouraging masturbation and more. And both of these creatures include demon horns and other attributes, very similar to those on the demonic figure Baphomet, which make the true nature and agenda of the show absolutely clear. Look, I was guilty. Um, I've been paying money to Netflix for quite some time, but now I realize anyone that's funding this sort of demonic filth that is being used to sexualize and further corrupt America's youth that it's time to cut the cord, not just with the cable companies, but with companies such as Netflix that are continuing to produce and promote absolute evil in child-friendly packages. I'll leave you with this. If you hate freedom, rationality, civility, and America, keep watching Netflix because that's what they've now become. A propaganda programming network to feed the appetite for violence that now pervades leftists in America. Or if you want even more outrageous fiction written for delusional progressives, just read the New York Times. 
And ladies and gentlemen, that is my take for today. On a side note and related to this video, please remember to keep an eye on your child's intake. Um, what they're taking in with the new apps out there, Netflix apps and things of that nature. It's very easy for them to basically watch whatever they want, whenever they want. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this message. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we definitely need your support. Uh, we're growing pretty quick. We've only been doing this for about, I'd say, five months. So things look really great, and I appreciate everything you guys do for us as well. Um, we do have several different ways to donate if you wish to uh, support our channel. Of course, Patreon, PayPal, as well as our new 316 merch, which is basically a lot of Christian apparel with our 316 logo. Um, so I guess that's it. And until next time, uh, you guys have a great week coming up and God bless you and your families. Thank you.